Hello Grade 12s. Today we look at summarizing data using averages. These averages are also called measures of central tendency. Let's join Lebo and her friends as they organize and summarize the data that they've collected about their classmates' monthly allowance. Hi Zindi. Hi Hello. guys. How are you? I'm good, thanks. Did my mom let you in? Yeah, she did. Very outside and she saw us. Um, I'm really excited to see what the results are going to be. Yeah. Have you had a chance to look through your questionnaires? Kind of. So, Tabo, how many completed questionnaires do you have? Well, I've got 12 completed and 3 blank ones. Most of the learners in the classes were eager to help us and couldn't wait to use the results to persuade their parents to give them an increase in their allowances. Well, I have 11 completed questionnaires from 2 classes and 2 blank ones, of course. And 2 other learners forgot to hand theirs in to their teachers. Well, my 10 are all filled in. Do you think we have enough completed questionnaires? Well, we handed out 40 questionnaires to different classes and 35 learners volunteered to answer the questionnaires. We ended getting between 30 and 40 questionnaires and we have responses from 11 plus 12 plus 10, that's 33. Remember, we estimated that less than 100 learners get an allowance. So 33 is still a big enough sample. The data we've collected should be a fair reflection of the whole population because we selected the learners randomly. Okay, so how are we going to record all the information we've collected from the questionnaires? Well, we need to draw up a table and record the responses for each question. You're right. We'll need to work carefully and mark each questionnaire. Once we've recorded the data from it, or we might just lose count. I also think we should number each questionnaire so we can check that we've recorded the data accurately. We'll number the questionnaires first and then we'll divide the whole pile into three so each of us can record data. Good idea. The total is 33, guys. So that means between the three of us, we get 11 each. So Tabo, one until 11 is yours. Nine. okay. And then 12 until 22 should be yours, Cindy. And I'll have the rest, 23 to 33. Okay, but we need some sort of table to record the data. If we put the number of the questionnaire in the first column, then we can use the following column to capture the data from each of the questions. Well, that makes sense. But I mean, we'll need lots of columns. Look at question two. We need to record data from seven different categories. That means we'll need nine columns in total to record all the information in one table. I suppose we could manage if we turn the page lengthways. That'll work. Maybe we should draw up two tables, one for each question, and then the columns won't be so squashed. We could use a computer to enter the data onto a spreadsheet, and once we've captured the data, we can print it out and it will look really neat. Using a spreadsheet will make it easier to organize the data later on. Tavo, you're the man. I'm glad to see that our friends are taking time to plan how they're going to count and organize data from the questionnaires. A spreadsheet is a great way of organizing information and it's really easy to use. Let's look at how you could use it to capture data. The spreadsheet is a grid made up of rows and columns. Each block is called a cell. You can enter column headings into the cells and then record data in each of the cells below the headings. Once all the data is entered, you can print it, sort it, do calculations with it, or even extract a graph of the data you've entered. I wonder who it is. Hello? Hi, Mrs. Masimang, it's Lebu here. I'm just calling to let you know that we've finished organizing and recording all the data from the questionnaires. Oh, that's nice, Lebu. Tell me what you've done. Well, we worked out that we needed to transfer all the information from a questionnaire onto a table. Then we realized that we needed to put data from each question in a separate column. We used a spreadsheet to enter the data and printed out the questions separately. Because we had numbered the questionnaires, we were able to check that we had entered the data correctly. Sounds very impressive. Can you mail me the spreadsheet? Yes, I can do that right now. It should get to you in any minute. Thanks. My mailbox is open. I'll see it when it arrives. 
What did you do next? After we had counted and organized the data from the questionnaires, we discussed how to analyze it and use it to present an argument to our parents. We remembered that our teacher told us that there are three different averages that can be used to compare our sample with the larger group, called the mode, the median, and the mean. That's right. I'm glad you remembered those useful terms. Ah, your mail is here now. Oh, good. Now you'll be able to see our data while we're chatting. Our problem is that we aren't quite sure what each of the terms mode, mean, and median are, and which of these measurements to use in our argument. I've got a clever way to help you remember. The word mode is the only one of these three terms that has an O in it, and the letter O is the first letter of the word often. The mode is the number that appears most often in a sample of data. Have a look at the data on your spreadsheet that you collected from the first question. What number in the list appears the most often? Um, well, 50 rand appears eight times. 100 rand appears 12 times. And 150 rand appears six times. There are only two entries for the other values. This means that there are more students who receive 100 rand than there are any other amount of pocket money. So, is the mode 100 rand? That's right. Now I'll tell you how I remember the meaning of the term median. I link the word median to the word middle. They both contain the letter D. The median indicates the middle position in a sample once the values have been arranged in ascending or descending order. Have another look at the values in the table. You already know there are 33 values entered. You need to find the middle value. To do this, you need to order the data from smallest to biggest. Then find what the value of the number in the middle is. Okay. Zindi showed us how to order the numbers on the spreadsheet by sorting them. I have a table of the sorted values in front of me, but how do I find the middle number? You know that the size of your sample is 33. And this is an odd number. And there will be a middle number with exactly the same number of entries below and above it. To find the middle number, we add one to the number of entries and divide it by two. I get it. 33 plus 1 is 34. Divided by 2 is 17. So the middle number is 17th on the table, which is 100 rand. Is that right? Correct. Well done. Well, it's easy to find the median if there is an odd number of values in the data. But what if there's an even number of values in the data? How would we find the middlemost value then? Good question. If you have an even number in your sample, you still need to find the value in the middle position. Take a look at your table and exclude the highest value. In this sample, you now have 32 values. The middle position lies between the 16th and 17th value. We calculate the value of the median here by finding the value that lies in the middle between the 16th and 17th values. If the middle value is not easy to see, then one way to find the middle value is to add the values of the 16th and 17th entries together and divide by two. So, are you now finding the mean of these two values? That's right. In this example, both the 16th and 17th values are the same, so the median would still be 100 rand. If, in a completely different sample of 32 entries, the 16th entry had a value of 50 rand and the 17th entry had a value of 100 rand, we would find the median by adding them together and dividing by 2. This gives us 75 rand, which is halfway between 50 rand and 100 rand. In this case, 75 rand is the median, even though it is not one of the values collected in the data. Okay, I get it. Thanks. 
there's one more average we need to examine, the mean. The word mean is very interesting. Let me explain it by using the example of the allowance you recorded in your table. If you add together the total amount of money the 33 learners in your sample get, and then divide that amount into 33 equal parts, the share that each learner gets would be the mean value of the allowance given to all the learners in the sample. Do you think that would be fair? Ah, uh, I'm not sure. If my allowance is larger than someone else's because my parents expect me to buy more items for myself, I would think that was quite mean. I agree, that would be mean. But how does a mean help us as a measurement when analyzing data? The mean determines the average or the middle of the data by taking into account every value in the data. So are there actually three averages or ways of finding the middle of a set of data? Yes, there are three averages. In your sample, the mean value was 115 rand, while the other two averages are both 100 rand. This gives us the idea that the middle value of the data or the central tendency for this sample is around 100 rand. That's what I thought. This is really not going to help you persuade my parents to give me an increase. My parents are not well off as other parents, and they do buy all my toiletries, clothes, and birthday gifts for all my close friends. They are already giving me 120 rand each month, so maybe I would be unreasonable asking for an increase. Hold on, Lebu. I don't think you should jump to conclusions too quickly. I think you should analyze the rest of the data and see how you fit in. Oh, I suppose you're right. Thanks again for your help. I really do understand the difference now between the terms mode, mean, and median. Even though the data from the question doesn't look like it will help me argue my case, at least I know there's quite a few other learners who aren't as fortunate as I am. It's always a pleasure to help. When you're done analyzing your data, please come and show me. I promise I won't forget. Okay, bye. The three friends had the advantage of using technology to organize and record the data. However, when technology is not available, we record our data manually using tallies and frequency tables. Thank you, Grade 12s. I hope you enjoyed this lesson as much as I did. And remember to look at the tasks for this section in the Advanced Data Handling Tasks video. You'll also be able to learn more about data handling on our website, www.mindset.co.za forward slash learn. Goodbye.